Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to present these data for you today. I'm going to tell you about the effect of four weeks of endurance training in combination with the beta-2 agonist uh, terbutaline or placebo on the muscle contractile function and leg lean mass in healthy men. So why is this important to investigate? There is a large prevalence of asthma in the general population, but also in elite athletes, especially in endurance athletes. This means a lot of athletes are taking beta-2 agonist as their asthma medication. One of these beta-2 agonists is tributylene. It's a commonly prescribed beta-2 agonist in Northern Europe, especially in Denmark. It's uh, short-acting and selective for the beta-2 adrenoceptors, which there's a high density of in skeletal muscle. A lot of studies have shown that beta-2 agonists can be performance enhancing. Therefore, the World Anti-Doping Agency has prohibited all oral use of beta-2 agonists. Some inhaled beta-2 agonists are allowed, and tributylin is allowed if you gain a therapeutic use exemption. Some animal studies have, have investigated the chronic use of beta-2 agonists. They have shown that these beta-2 agonists can induce hypertrophy in the, in the skeletal muscle and cause a shift in the muscle phenotype going from an oxidative to a glycolytic uh, type. Furthermore, be, a chronic use of beta-2 agonists can increase the contractile force in the skeletal muscle and also improve calcium handling in the muscle. But it may also attenuate the muscle endurance. Studies, uh, when the, in studies where they have combined uh, use of the uh, chronic, for chronic use of beta-2 agonists and uh, also trained the, sub, the, the animals, they have seen an attenuated effect on the endurance training in these animals. There's also been done research of chronic administration in humans of beta-2 agonists. However, this is the oral administration and the prohibited use. Um, they have shown an increase in muscle strength, and they have also shown an increase in peak power output during a 30-second maximal cycling. Recently, our uh, research group has uh, investigated four weeks of oral tibutylin in healthy trained men, in no, not in combination with any training. This showed an increase in the maximal voluntary contraction in the, in the tibutylin group and also showed an increase uh, peak twitch force. Furthermore, it showed an increasement, an enhancement in the 30 second of maximal cycling in the peak power and mean power output. There was no enhancement in the incremental cycling in, in the VO2 max and the time to fatigue. Lastly, it also showed an en enhancement of the lean body mass and in the cross sectional area in, in both fiber types. So what are the limitations of this study? The limitations are that this is also oral use and it's not in combination with training. So it's not li in a lifelike situation. No study has investigated the therapeutic use of beta-2 agonists in combination with training. So that's what we did. We investigated the effect of the therapeutic inhalation of tibutylin in combination with endurance training and then we looked at the leg lean mass the muscle contractile function, and the maximal oxygen consumption in the trained young healthy men. Our study was a randomized controlled parallel study. It consisted of two visits before and two visits after the intervention period. At each visit, the subjects received a standardized meal, underwent, underwent two DEXA scans, and also uh, we measured the, their maximal voluntary contraction with the percutaneous electrostimulation of the right quadriceps muscle. At the first visit before and after the intervention period, we also measured the subject's view to max. At, at the last visit before and after the intervention period, we took two muscle biopsies before and after uh, test to exhaustion. However, we have not analyzed these biopsies yet. The intervention consisted of four weeks of daily inhalation of either tributylin or placebo. Uh, the subjects received four milligrams of tributylin equaling to uh, eight puffs a day. The endurance training was three times a week, supervised, and it consisted of 10 minutes of uh, biking at 80 to 85% of the maximal heart rate. 
followed by a 30 second sprint all out. This was the repeated three times in a row, after which the st subjects inhaled the study drugs supervised. The days the, the subjects weren't training, we also monitored the inhalation, so we had a 100% compliance to taking the study drug. We then matched and randomized our subjects into two groups. We had uh, 21 uh, subjects completed the, su the study. We had nine people in the placebo group, and we had 12 people in the tubulin group. Okay, something happened here. Um, yes, I can still <laughs> tell you the, the important things. We actually did not see any uh, interaction or effect in either leg lean mass, the MVC, time to peak twitch force, or the half relaxation time. There was no interaction and there was no within group effect. However, if we looked here, at the peak twitch force, we did see an interaction. There was a 73 Newton difference between the two groups after the intervention, but it's important to stress here that there was no within group effect. Okay, now it, it's okay now. <laughs> we also looked at the maximal oxygen consumption. Here we found both an interaction effect, but also a within group effect in the placebo group. There was no within group effect after the intervention in the tubulin group. You saw here that the placebo group had an increase, increased the maximal oxygen consumption with 4 to 5 percent, whereas the placebo group did not enhance in their maximal oxygen consumption. We then normalized this to the maximal oxygen consumption per leg lean mass, and we saw the same difference was apparent. We still saw the interaction, and we also saw the within group difference in the placebo group and still no difference in the tubulin group. Lastly, we looked at time to exhaustion during the incremental uh, test with the VO2 max. Here we again saw an interaction, but we also saw a within group effect in both groups. We saw that both the tubulin group had an effect of the intervention and also the, the placebo <laughs> group had an effect. However, the placebo group's effect was much larger than the, the tubulin group. So to summarize, we saw no significant differences in neither the ma maximal voluntary contraction in the leg lean mass or the time to peak twitch force or in the half relaxation time. However, we did see a significant interaction in relation to the peak, peak twitch force. We also saw that tubulin attenuated the training-induced enhancements normally seen in VO2 max in time to exhaustion. So if you are an endurance athlete, it's not so good to be taking a large dose of beta-2 agonist daily. Lastly, I'd like to thank my supervisor, Martin Hostrup, and the rest of the research group, and we had funding from the World Anti-Doping Agency and also from the um, cultural minister, but I forgot to put them on there.